Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Hey, everybody. We are back. Steve Green, the success doctor with the Make the Great Educational Podcast. We are getting up there. We are thinking episode 90, almost at 100, 90 episodes in a year. That's uh, pretty good. Today, parents, athletes, get your pencils out, get ready to take notes. I have a special guest today. Everybody knows if you listen to the podcast, I love having guests on, especially if they're going to bring value and provide good information to my audience because this is all about actions. This is all about actions parents and students can take in order to maximize your child's education. So my guest today is Patty Lou. Patty, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself, Steve? Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming on. I am psyched as always. It is a beautiful day here. Hopefully it's a beautiful day where everybody is. Let me tell everybody about you a little bit, and then we're going to get right into it, okay? Okay. So, Patty Lou, founder of a company called Driven to Peak Consulting. Love the name, Driven to Peak Consulting. Sports psychology and performance coaching. She is a performance enhancement consultant and coach, helps high school and young adult athletes overcome mental blocks that prevent them from improving their performance and achieving their goals. They take younger athletes on a case-by-case basis working with athletes in the United States and Canada and all the way up from youth to the college level. Graduated from Randolph Macon College with a Bachelor in Psychology, Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and a Master's Degree in Kinesiology, say that word five times, in Sports Psychology Concentration from University of Tennessee, a volunteer. Huh? Um, she is a performance consultant, a mental performance coach, a sports psychology consultant, a mental skills coach, and a mental skills consultant. That's a lot of stuff there. So last thing, what's the difference between a performance enhancement coach, also known as a mental performance consultant, and a sports psychologist? We're going to answer that question today. But basically, the sports psychologist helps with performance and mental health issues. The performance enhancement consultant helps with performance issues. So... And Patty lives in Richmond, Virginia, way down there in the south. So, okay, so let's start right here. Why don't you just, let's start by this. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get to this point? Why does this interest you? Why is this a passion of yours? Go for it. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Patty. Um, It goes back to my childhood days when I first got exposed to sports it was Michael Jordan of the Chicago Bulls at that time I didn't realize I was watching the NBA finals and getting a chance to see him win his fifth and sixth championships on TV that was my first exposure to sports I fell in love with sports ever since and I knew I wanted a career related to sports Fast forward to my teenager years, I saw Tiger Woods play golf, and that made me want to try the game. Well, learning the game meant taking golf lessons, and in the process of taking golf lessons, I became aware of athletes' wants, needs, frustrations, and fears because I experienced them all. Luckily, I had that golf teacher who provided me that safe and non-judgmental environment to honestly discuss my struggles. Not all traditional coaches do that. I was lucky enough to have one. And I knew I was majoring in psychology and I wanted a career related to sports. So therefore, after undergrad, I pursued my master's related to performance in sports psychology. Fast forward to December of 2017, I started the process of building my own business. After a year and a half on my own, I hired a business coach. We started working together in October of 2019. And in December of 2019, I started from scratch and I niched niched in to focus my business on working with high school athletes and college athletes, because I knew that if I was on my deathbed, um, working with, having the opportunity to work with athletes was something I wasn't willing to give up. 
And mm -hmm. um, at that time, I met an entrepreneur who I didn't know would change my life forever. Um, she has become a friend and she's not only my mentor, she's my friend. And um, basically in December of 2019, I started my business all over with the focus of concentrating on working with high school and um, college athletes. And like you mentioned, I take on younger athletes on a case by case basis. And here we are nine months later. So let's think from the perspective of a parent. So let's say we're a parent and we have a child who's interested in sports and so maybe they've got some talent in sports that looks like they can take it somewhere, uh, maybe at the high school level, elementary level, middle school level, maybe in college level, D2, D1, whatever. Uh, what's the benefit of working with a sports psychology person? Like what, what sort of techniques uh, do you think they would gain by working with somebody with, like yourself? Um, they would... There, there's, they would have more confident kids. There will be less family drama due to not arguing over their sports performances so much. You learn to effectively communicate with your child about their sports performance. And you basically have, you basically, <clears throat> there's basically less family drama, more confident kids, less stress, less performance anxiety. And uh, their kid will be able to replicate the magic that they produce in practice through in competition because a co very common issue for athletes is that they're able to put on a magical performance in practice. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to competition, that seems to be like the roadblock. They're not able to replicate that performance in competition, especially during crunch time. Mm. Yeah, well, in competition, obviously, there's more pressure. It's the same thing in academics, right? You know, I'm an academic coach, if you want to use that term, and I work with kids all the time. They can do all the problems in homework time or in practice time, but then it comes to testing, and it's a much more anxiety-ridden situation. Um, so what, what do you, it, it, without giving away the shop here, but what are you doing? Is there some specific things you can talk about that you can do to help your your mentor, your your proteges, your the children you work with, get ahead when they're in a competition. Let's 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 investigate that a little bit. Uh, um, well, if parents um, invest now, think about it. Invest in a person such as myself now. They'll save money down the road because I will get your children to the point where they are consistently performing at their best rather than randomly and. Um, spontaneously you'll be consistent so they'll be able to get that college scholarship have a better chance of getting that college athletic scholarship um, it, basically help yeah, go, them develop a routine okay so is this done is this in addition to the practice like, let's just pick a sport uh, uh, is there a sport you work with more than others um um i wouldn't say that right now um i'm in i I work with athletes in a variety of sports. Right, so let, let's just football. say, uh, let's just say uh, basketball. Okay? okay. Just for talking purposes. So we have a, a, a child who's a, a talent or has maybe not even a talented. They just have a big passion for basketball. Uh, so they're probably on a team. They may have a coach. They may have a, I don't know, a shooting coach or a dribbling coach. I don't know. Um, is what you're doing in addition to that? Is it coordinated with that? Um, how, 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 how does it work in terms of, because I know a lot of the parents I talk to, their biggest, one of their concerns, they got lots of concerns, and including myself as a parent, is just time. You know, okay. kids go to school, I mean, right now things are a little wacky with school, but then they're in this practice, then they're in this practice, then they go to this class, then they go to that class. So time's always at a premium. But, uh, so what are you actually doing to put the child ahead, you know, what, what, what's your process or what, what, what are you giving them that maybe they can't get anywhere else? Well, um, I help them with structuring their practice a little bit, like outside of the mandatory and practice and training schedules. Like if they're practicing on their own, I want to make sure that they actually practice to improve their skills, not just practice what they want. And okay. normally when they practice what they want, they work on their strengths. That 
the skills that they like are their strengths and they don't work on their weaknesses. I help them schedule their practice sessions where they are actually working on their weaknesses so that they can actually really improve their skills. And they're not practicing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, no, good point. Because I see the same thing. I do a lot of test prep, right? SAT kind of stuff. And everybody's very happy to work on the math problems that they're good at, right? Oh, I know how to yeah. do this one. Let's just do 10 more yeah. like that. The trouble is, it's not what gets you better, right? Yes. You, you yes. got to get out of your comfort zone and you got to get, um, you know, you got to just directly address the things that are problematic and that, that you're struggling with or may struggle with to get better at them. Um, so you have a physical piece to this, right? There's in basketball, let's say, you know, how you hold your ball or how you, where you keep mm -hmm. your elbow or whatever when you're shooting. Tell me, talk to me about the mental piece. Talk to me about, uh, I guess let's just use the word psychology, right? Sports okay. psychology, right? So this performance psychology. So how much, how important is this? I'm, I'm assuming very, uh, but, but in your particular delivery of your service, how, how does this play in with what you're doing? Yes, it's very important. One of the things I try to emphasize with parents is if they're willing to invest in the physical, why not the mental? The mental aspect of sports is just as important or even more important than the physical. Is if you look at mistakes made during competition are not due to lack of proficiency in skills, it's normally due to um, mental mistakes. And by, and by doing that, it's like the self-talk, the motivation, um, the confidence, um, working smarter rather than harder, um, self-care, um, making sure that they balance, um, balance um, tough practices with self-care, making sure that they get away from sports um, not only physically, but mentally. And a lot of athletes struggle with getting away from sports mentally because sports is such a big part of their lives. Is there some specific exercise? Is it just visualization? Is it like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I know I've, I've had, I've had uh, like a yoga instructor on my podcast, right? And on my live streams. And one of her big things is relaxation, right? Mm -hmm. So she had, uh, I'm probably not going to use the right term exactly, but I'm just going to call them breathing exercises. So she had these exercises. People would breathe in and hold their breath and count, I think, to seven and then and exhale. But are there specific th things you could do? Because you're not with somebody 24-hour a day, right, Patty? Mm -hmm. So do, do you give them things to work on? So let's say you work with somebody on Monday at 4 o'clock, okay. right? Yes. Okay. Now you're going to see him again the following Monday or on Friday. Yes. What would they do in between? Are there things you're going to give them in between to, to build these um, yes. like muscles up, so to speak? And yes. I, I, I get them a, a few things to focus on. And sometimes I even create a workbook for them that um, focuses on what that emphasizes what I want them to focus on. Like for, I know that forming new habits takes time and it, based on results of research studies, it takes at least a month. And I try to emphasize with them that they're gonna um, revert back to their old habits, but trying to get them back on track as soon as possible is the major thing. And I tried to really get them to develop a routine, like on the day of practice, this is, I know I'm supposed to be here. This is when I'm supposed to be there and I will be there. How much, uh, let me ask you a question. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I, I have seen, uh, and, and this was true with some of my kids' friends. They're super good at sports, really athletic, just, just naturally very talented. 8, 10, 12 years old, right? And then the kind of the fun comes out of it, right? Like mm -hmm. you're 10 mm -hmm. years old, you're playing baseball, you're with your friends, yes. you know, it's like a social yes. thing. The parents are in the sideline or behind a dugout, whatever. And then it always seems to reach a point later. I'm just going to say when they're 15, because okay. they're now starting to say, hey, maybe I'm good enough to uh, have college coaches look at me. 
or, or maybe even beyond that. I, I've okay. worked with uh, people who are like national champions in some sports because a lot of times when kids get really high up in sports, they, they don't have time for school, which is kind of a bad thing to say, but so they'll choose to homeschool. So I've had kids I've homeschooled in math and science because there are tennis academies and golf academies and gymnastic academies and more individual sports. Yeah, I don't see, you don't see as much in, let's say, football. But anyway, get back to my question. So I've seen some situations where kids almost just burn out, right? Like mm-hmm. they get to 15, 16, 17. They've now been playing this sport 8, 10 years. Uh, and, and the joy comes out of a little bit. You know, now there's pressure on them. It becomes almost like a job uh, in a way. Uh, do, do you see this? Is there a way to combat it? I mean, yes. I know sports are supposed to be fun, right? Sports are, yes. are a, a, an entertainment for most of us uh, participating. And I mean, I, you know, I try, I, to me, sports is exercise. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I try to exercise to just keep myself in some kind of physical shape. I don't really look at that as playing a sport, but give, give me your viewpoint on that. Is, is there, is there a danger in the sense of starting too early because of risking burnout? Does it matter? No, what, what I, do you think? I wouldn't say starting early is a risk. I think more importantly, most of the time, the issue is um, uh, they don't include in their daily routine um, getting away from sports mentally. That's the big issue that Mm -hmm. I'm seeing with the athletes is they don't include as part of their routine getting away from it. And by getting away from it mentally, I mean no sports talk, no sports video games, no sports period. It's just doing whatever they want to do for fun and relaxation. There's nothing related to it related to sports. So, so, oh, so you're basically saying just almost clear, clear mind, right? Like, yes. okay, yes. let's just, you know, do something else. Maybe do music, I don't know, whatever, do your homework. <laughs> yes. Um, do, uh, do, do you see any difference in a person who's doing an individual sport, let's just say tennis or golf? versus somebody you may be coaching who's a participant in a team sport uh, like football or baseball or field hockey or lacrosse or something like that. Does that change how you might coach or counsel a student? No, I wouldn't say that necessarily, but um, with the team sports, there is that team component that could also be an issue. Like there's, um, with the team sport, it could be their teammates, like internal conflict that's going on in the locker room that's affecting them, where they have to feel like, I have to do everything, I have to dominate the game in order for us to win. Mm. Or they're not getting enough playing time, they're pressured to perform in limited playing time. Mm. Hey, Steve Green here, the success doctor. My guest is Patty Liu, who is a sports psychology and sports performance coach. Make the great podcast. You are listening to it and hopefully enjoying it. If you have questions or comments, drop them at the bottom here or drop them in the social media and we will get back to you with them. Podcast is always about one thing, giving you actions you can take as parents and students to maximize your education. In this case, your sports life. Patty, let's talk, let me ask you a couple more questions here. Um, okay. Okay. For those of you who may, I don't know when somebody's going to be listening to this exactly, but this is September, 2020. Okay. We are still, we're about six months into, right? Six and a half, whatever, uh, into what I'm calling the COVID world, right? It's COVID-19, <laughs> but it's become COVID-2020. Um, has this changed anything in terms of people's, uh, vision of sports uh, or participation in sports or how you're dealing with it at all? Obviously, there's a lot less team sports going on, right? School yes. Schools aren't having sports, but how's this, uh, what, what, what's your observations here? Um, I, I know that um, there's a lot of concern um, because they're like, what are kids going to do to stay involved in sports with the fall season getting canceled in some areas? Mm -hmm. outside of the mandatory um, practices, outside of the mandatory practices and training sessions that they're going to try to incorporate virtually. Um, I know parents are concerned about how this is going to affect college recruiting their children for scholarships. 
um, how some athletes are not going to have a, not going to be able to have their senior season. Yeah, which are all legit concerns. I mean, where we are at least, some schools have sports, some don't. So even the ones who are having it might be playing four or five games instead of 12 or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the season is. Um, do, do you, do you uh, in the kids you're working with, um, is, is it impacting them as much? I mean, because they're just going out and doing what they do, right? Um, they're just not able to participate as fully, perhaps. Let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Um, what, what do you... You know, we're in a world where everything's about tr- trophies and goals. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, when I do SAT prep, it's how close do you get to the SAT, the 1600? Or mm-hmm. you're getting A's in classes, you're getting hundreds. It's, everything is measured, right? Everything yeah. can be quantified. Uh, what, what do you consider a win for your, for your, the kids you work with? Because, you know, it's not always about points, right? Yes. It's always it's not, who's the most points or what team wins the most games or, you know, who gets the biggest trophy. Uh, but how would you define a win? I mean, I think this, you know, I, I have a psychology background too. So I do a lot of motivational things, but what, what, what would you tell somebody in that case? Maybe, you know, what, what's a win? Hey, we won here because you did what? Um, um, I increase their passion, their fun in sports. Like, for example, the 10 year old basketball player before working with me, he, mm-hmm. he dragged practice. Practice was like a chore for him. He wasn't enjoying it. I help him find the joy in, um, joy and fun in practice. Now one drop of rain, he still wants to go outside and practice. How did you do that? Can, can you, Tell us the secret sauce here, or is that giving away too much? No, um, I actually, um, I help him structure practice where it was more fun. Um, basically, I help him structure practice. It was more fun. And I also incorporated the NBA 2K video game where hmm. he could get his video game time and also learn how to improve his performance at the same time. I got him to pay attention to what the players in the video game were doing, and he found um, pleasure in trying to replicate it when he's outside in the yard practicing. Interesting. All right. Do you have anything else you just want to add? Like, uh, you know, talk to, we got parents listening. What, what, uh, what do you want them to know? What, what do you, what's the message you really want to leave everybody clear in their minds right now? That, um, if the fun, uh, make sure that the passion and fun of sports is still there because skill development will happen as long as the passion and fun is there. But without the passion and fun component, the love of the game, skill development won't happen. And now is the perfect time for them to get their kids to focus on the mental aspect of performance without a fall season in some areas, even with a fall season in some areas. Now is the perfect time to, I'm not telling you to not focus on the physical aspect of sports, but also um, have some attempt, pay attention to the mental aspect so Hmm. that your, your kids, whenever they return to competition or whenever their next game is, that will help them improve their performance during crunch time. They will no longer make the same mistakes over and over again during competition because as a parent, that's the most painful thing to watch is your kids making the same mistakes over and over again during competition. Mm -hmm. Which is the same thing in academics. It's so parallel. It's interesting. Um, Yeah. Yeah. We want to break through that. Okay. Patty Lou, tell us how to reach you. A parent wants to get a hold of you. They have questions, website, email, where where do they go? Um, My website is www.driventopeakconsulting.com. Dot com. My email is Patty Lou at driven to peak consulting dot com. Nice. I always offer a free 20 minute session to see if any if, if sports psychology helps your children improve their athletic performance mm-hmm. and for you all to learn more about how sports psychology can help your children improve their athletic performance. So we, let's, let's say, let me ask you a couple of quick questions here. What's your favorite sport? Do you have one? My favorite sport. Basketball and golf. 
basketball and golf. Okay, there we go. Uh, uh, you still playing both or either? Yes, um, but with COVID <laughs> right now, I'm not playing. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I know that golf golf courses can be open. Depends where you live. I'm not sure about Richmond. Um, winter time's coming up. And, and, uh, last question. Winter time's coming up. People are generally inside more, right? Um, anything, any particular advice you would give people maybe can't go out and do the outdoor sports they might want, especially if they're in the North or, you know, places where the weather's cold. Um, like I would say, watch, watch, um, your, um, old film. Um, um, I know not, it's, uh, it's no longer videotapes, but watch your old games and see where you might have, um, like what you can improve on maybe hmm. some cues that you didn't pay attention to you can pay attention to now make a list of for when weather gets better of skills that you want to improve on yeah good so you're breaking down film you can do it as an analysis of what you got to work on beautiful all right patty lou i really appreciate you coming on here let's give you some love there you go there we go. There's the big, the, we got a hundred thousand people live here. Listen to this. There we go. So, um, yeah. Hey, Steve green here. My guest, Patty Lou driven to peak consulting sports psychology, helping your kids not only do great on the field, but off the field. It's important. Uh, the make the great podcast. We are all about helping parents and students to maximize your education, check out the Make the Grade resource community, which is makethegrade.education. Check out the success community, which is your ticket to basically taking everything to the next level, which is makethegrade.community. Love to hear your feedback. Love to hear your comments as always. Don't forget Education Live Thursdays. Patty's going to be a guest in a few weeks, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, but every Thursday night at 8 education live thursday it is hot it is awesome it the buzz is unbelievable about it right that's right <laughs> all right we are going to wrap this up steve green make three podcasts one last time patty lou thank you very much and Thanks we will see you. we got it thank you for all your insight and we'll catch you next time all right thank you You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.